Hi guys, Karen Miller here. I wanted to talk to you today about an incident that occurred in my family that is diet related and health related. And since my website is not just about preparing meals, it's also about health and wellness, I thought I would share this with you. One of my family members developed, um, had a stroke actually last month. And I know that some of you had um, questioned the way that I was speaking, that I didn't sound that I was up to par, which was true. I was very depressed and stressed out about what was going on in my family. Um, this family member had a stroke and um, was diagnosed with diabetes and high blood pressure. You know, high blood pressure runs in my family, but diabetes was a big shock. And in doing my research, I realized that diabetes is really an epidemic in the United States. And recently, people had asked me to do certain desserts, you know, like sweet stuff. I am not, I don't have a sweet tooth. I am more of a savory person. And if you look at my presentations that I've done over the months, it's mostly savory stuff. This is my go-to. I don't have a sweet tooth, thank God. Um, but this particular family member really loves a lot of sweet stuff. And even though this person has been trying to follow the diet that I have been doing, it's not, they're not consistent, you know. Um, I'm sure within your family you have members of your family who are not doing what you are doing or it's harder for them to do it or they're not um, committed to doing it. So it's harder. So what I wanted to say is that I did start doing some sweet stuff. I did the strawberry skillet cake and I did the, uh, the granola and I do have some more things up my sleeve which I'm working on and doing testing on. But before I do that, I just wanted to give you some statistics. And apparently there are 29, over 29 million people in the United States who have diabetes. This is one out of 11 people. One out of four know that they have diabetes. 86 million people, and this is the really scary number, have pre-diabetes, but they don't even know it, and they have symptoms that they might ignore. And you need to go and do research on this and find out what the symptoms are for pre-diabetes to know if you might have pre-diabetes, because you might be eating a lot of sweet stuff and thinking that it's okay, and sooner or later you're gonna develop diabetes and it's gonna be not good. More than one out of three adults have pre-diabetes. That's a big, big number. One out of three have pre-diabetes. Nine out of 10 people don't know they have pre-diabetes. That's also a big number. Without weight loss and moderate physical activity, 15 to 20 percent of people with pre-diabetes will develop type 2 diabetes within five years. The risk of death for people with diabetes is 50% higher than people without it. 1.7 million people 20 years or older were diagnosed with diabetes in 2012. Those are 2012 uh, statistics. Maybe it's a lot more right now this is 2017 this is five years so but i'm just giving you an idea the point i'm trying to make is that in this culture in america the the breakfast food for instance the go-to is the uh donuts the corn muffins the blueberry muffins in the morning with coffee this is the go-to now if you are following dr sevi's recommendations you're not going to be eating like that but I'm just saying in general this is the go-to and we crave sweet stuff I mean the craving alone is 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 something that you should pay attention to if you crave sweets that's a clue that you should go and see what is going on because maybe your insulin levels are all haywire so what I really wanted to say is that 
I don't have a sweet tooth. My go-to would not be preparing a lot of sweet stuff. I am going to do it because I think we as humans, we need that sweet thing, you know, every once in a while. And we, we need sugar for energy. I mean, your DNA is made up of sugar. This is what you need. But then when you overdo it and you don't have a balance, and the reason why we don't have balance is because they have screwed up the soil. The soil does not have any minerals. You have to balance the minerals with the carbs and everything else. And now our nutrition, it has been so compromised that we are not eating correctly. We don't have the proper balance. So if you don't have the proper minerals and the proper balance, then you're going to have diabetes based on these statistics. And I don't want to be responsible for anyone who, any one of my subscribers or anyone who would come upon my channel and do anything that I do. And next thing you know, they go to the doctor and they say they have pre-diabetes or whatever. I am going to do some sweet stuff but I'm going to prepare it in such a way and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to do a disclaimer that this is not something you have every day. It's like when I made my pancakes and my waffles and it's not something you have every day for breakfast. In my family, we do this once a week. We have waffles or pancakes. The other day when I made the waffles, I had never made waffles in my life. It was mostly pancakes and I did the waffles because I did it because someone requested it, but I never had a waffle iron, never made waffles. So waffles, pancakes with a load of syrup on it, even if it's agave syrup, which is a low glycemic index, which means that it goes through your system very quickly and it doesn't spike up your glucose levels so quickly. But sugar is sugar is sugar, even fruits natural fruits it's sugar sugar is sugar is sugar and when you are diagnosed with diabetes you cannot have these things maybe a plum every once in a while but you cannot have these things even the natural so-called natural sugars which are from the fruits or the dates and the figs you cannot have these things because it's going to drive your sugar up and you can get a stroke i mean diabetes is one of the things that could cause a stroke and this is why people get stroke suddenly like this family member of mine suddenly got this stroke didn't know that she had diabetes and a lot of people don't know that they have diabetes and they get a stroke or something happens and then they find out that they have diabetes so you have to be very very careful and based on these statistics I am encouraging all of my subscribers or anyone who come across my channel to please, please go and have your diabetes checked and to make sure that you don't have diabetes and to make sure that when you eat that you have a balance. So with all of this said, I am going to make a beautiful avocado salad today. It has gotten so hot over the past two days, suddenly it's like summertime, even though it's not yet summer. I'm going to make an avocado salad with some watercress and cucumbers and romaine lettuce for you. So I hope that I have given you some information today and I am encouraging you to go and have your diabetes checked and I wish you good health and um don't eat too much sweets and if you do eat sweets you have to balance it with the bitter stuff you know the dandelion tea dandelions uh the raspberry leaf tea um cinnamon tea is also good for diabetes there are other there are things that you can do there are things that are on dr sevi's list and there are things that are not on his list that are good for diabetes so I'll continue to talk about this while I'm cooking because I know people say that I talk too much, blah, 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 but this is who I am. And I have this piece of information and something happened in my family that is personal to me and I wanted to share it with you. And I hope you appreciate it. And again, take care of yourself and I'll see you at the table or at the stove. Bye. 
So guys, I wanted to show you the ingredients that I'm going to use for the chunky uh, avocado salad. I'm not going to do, make this a long video because um, this is part of my uh, talking video that I talked uh, when I talked about the diabetes situation. So I'm just going to show you the ingredients and then I'm going to show you the end product with the platter and I'm going to write the ingredients uh, in the instructions. So I have my avocado here. I have four avocados. These are organic avocados that I found at Whole Foods. I have a medium sized red onion. I have some organic grape tomatoes. I couldn't find cherry tomatoes. So I bought the, the grape tomatoes, which is not a big deal. And I have some left over here. This is some heirloom tomatoes that I bought and I have some left over here. So I'm gonna use that. And I have some culantro. This is what culantro looks like. It looks like um, dandelion. It has a serrated edge. You see the zigzaggy edge? And this is cilantro. So if you cannot find the culantro, you could use the cilantro. It's the same thing. Or oh, this is the shadow benny. Trinidadians call this the shadow benny. And I have my key limes here. I get these from uh, Whole Foods, but it's so rare sometimes you have so much problems finding these but every once in a while I find them I use about 10 of these because they're so tiny they're so tiny but they have quite a bit of juice in them so um, I use about 10 of these for my dressing for my salad so I just wanted to show you how I cut my avocado I mean I think everybody knows how to do this by now and then you twist it and you see the seed and you do this and you turn it and that's it and you remove you remove the seed all right and then I'm gonna scrape this out and put it in my bowl all right I just wanted to show you that so guys I'm going to make the dressing for our avocado salad I have here a quarter cup of grapeseed oil I don't I wanted to use olive oil but then I said the extra virgin olive oil is a bit too strong I just wanted something that didn't add too much extra flavor to my salad and a quarter cup of the lime juice and I'm going to add to this three teaspoons of uh, coarse sea salt I love coarse sea salt one two three and I'm going to mix this in so this is it guys and here let me show you my um, my avocados um, this is a salad so we're gonna chop this we're not gonna mash this like it's uh, baby food like pap it's you know I think for a salad you should just cut it up like this in chunks and you put your dressing on it I don't like it for a dip yes the guacamole for a dip yes but not a salad for a salad I think you should just chop it up like that in chunks like that so this is our avocado and because I did this in advance because this has to go quickly and here I have my tomato and onion and my grape tomato I chopped it up into uh, four pieces like this see like this one here into four quarters and then I had some of the heirloom that I showed you left over in my refrigerator so I added that to it I have some onions here and the cilantro and the colantro so I'm gonna mix this up now for you to see what we have here I'm going to write the recipe in the description so you would have it so what I'm going to do now I'm going to add my avocados to this this is a large salad it is so hot today guys so so hot the heat just came on suddenly and this is a perfect day to sit outside 
and have this salad I cannot wait to have this so now we are going to take our dressing the salt the lime juice and the oil and pour it over here this would be even better tomorrow tomorrow this would be even better you could add some more oil you could add the olive oil you know just do whatever you like and I'm gonna mix this in and what I want to show you I prepared a platter a salad platter that I'm going to put this in the middle of my platter I have some watercress some romaine lettuce and some cucumbers this is looking good so let me bring my platter so here's my platter guys I have some watercress here you see the watercress I put it first and then on top of my watercress I have some romaine lettuce that I chopped up and on top of that I put it all around I cut it lengthwise to give some interest and you could also pick this up and use it to dip if you have um, some kind of dipping sauce so I thought it would be good to cut it like that you could cut it round you can cut it in chunks whatever you like but I think this would be nice it gave it a nice look so what I wanted to also say to you you should have your salad spinner so you can spin your um, greens after you wash them thoroughly so to remove the excess moisture this is a salad spinner I'm sure many of you have this if you don't please find one um, so now I'm going to put my avocado salad in the middle here of this this would be good for a party for your dinner summer party outside all right so there we have it I think this is looking so good I cannot wait to have this with some rye crackers or if you have your cheese with some bread for your dinner not much cooking it's raw and it's healthy and it looks just fresh and delicious so I hope you do this for the summer and I wish you all the best and I wish you good health and don't forget to like and subscribe